Okay, this video is going to be about number six from the uh, 2017 Calc AB exam, and it's a problem where you're given uh, a lot of information about three different functions, and you're, you're given a function, you're given a table of values, and then you're given a graph, and we just have to answer questions about them. So, the first part deals with the function f of x, which is cosine of 2x plus e to the sine of x, and we are asked to find um, the slope of the line tangent to the graph at x equals pi. So that's just equivalent to finding f prime of pi. So this is a very straightforward question. So first we'll find f prime of x, which is the derivative of cosine of 2x is negative 2 sine of 2x. So negative 2 sine of 2x. And then plus the derivative of e to the sine of x, which is going to be e to the sine of x times the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine of x. And now we want to evaluate this at pi, so what I'm going to do is fill in pi's across the board. So f prime of pi is going to be negative 2 sine of 2 pi. I'm a big advocate of filling in so that you can then check your work and make sure that everything went right. Um, some people would jump right to values at this point. So we have this. Now I'm going to need to figure out um, the values of sine of 2 pi, sine of pi, and cosine of pi. You should have those memorized. Um, it's possible you don't, in which case you might just sketch the unit circle really quickly. And then uh, we need pi and we need 2 pi, which is really 0 and pi. So this point, which is 1, 0, and then this point, which is negative 1, 0, and points on the unit circle are cosine, comma, sine. So you can just use this now to read off the values. So that's going to be um, the sine of 2 pi is 0, so negative 2 times 0, plus e to the 0, and then cosine of pi is negative 1. And then if you simplify that, you just get negative 1. So uh, it's asking me explicitly to find the slope of the line tangent. So I'm just going to write out a little sentence because uh, make sure they know that I know what I'm doing. So the slope of the line tangent to f of x at x equals pi is negative 1. And that's part A. So part B is going to introduce a new function, which is called k of x. And it's going to involve f of x and h of x. So h of x is given as a graph, and f of x is the same function as before, and k of x is equal to h of f of x. So it's a composition, and we want to find k prime of pi. So this is straight application of the chain rule. So k prime of x is going to be um, h prime of f of x, and then times f prime of x. And now it's just a matter of getting values. So we're looking for k prime of pi. So that's going to be h prime of f of pi. And then times f prime of pi, which you might remember that we had just found in the previous part. And so now we need some values. So uh, I need to figure out f of pi. So f of pi is going to be cosine of 2 pi plus e to the sine of pi. And I know these values... So cosine of 2 pi is 1, and uh, sine of pi is 0, so it's 1 plus 1. So f of pi is actually 2. So I'm going to reevaluate this. So k prime of pi is h prime of 2, and then times f prime of pi. So now all I really need to do is I need to figure out um, h prime of 2. So um, if I go to the graph of h and look for x equals 2, um, that's on this line segment right here, and this line segment has a slope of down 1 over 3, so negative 1 third. So h prime on that interval is just negative 1 third. So h prime of 2 is negative 1 third, and I can just fill in values. So it's going to be negative 1 third, and then um, times negative 1, which is what I got from part A. So that's where I'm not showing the work for that again, because I already did it. So that's from part A, and then this evaluates to k prime of pi is uh, positive one-third. So there you go. And uh, on to part C, where we introduce another function. This function uses um, g of x and h of x. So now we have a table and we have a graph. And m of x is the name of this function. And m of x is g of negative 2x times h of x. And we want to find m prime of 2. So this is the product rule. So we're kind of hitting every rule, except for uh, I don't think the quotient rule shows up in this problem. So product rule, m prime of x is going to be first, so g of negative 2x times derivative of the second, so h prime of x plus second, which is h of x, times the derivative of the first, which is g 
prime of negative 2x and then times 2 by the chain rule. And now it's all about filling in values. So we're looking for m prime of 2. So m prime of 2 is going to be g of negative 4 times h prime of 2 plus h of 2 and then g prime of negative 4 and negative 2. So now we're going to have to use the table and the graph to get these values. So um, g of negative 4, you go to the table, g of negative 4 in the table is 5, so we're going to replace that with 5. So m prime of 2 is 5. h prime of 2, um, remember, comes from this line segment, and that has a slope of negative 1 third, so times negative 1 third, plus we need to find h of 2, so that point on the graph right there is um, where x is equal to 2. And if you start at zero, you go um, over one, down one third, over again, down another one third. So that's going to be uh, negative two thirds. So plug in negative two thirds. Go to the table to get g of g prime of negative four. Right there is negative one, and then the negative two just stays. Um, so you could actually be done there. You could uh, say that that's your answer. I don't really like doing that, so I like to simplify things, like living on the edge, where I might lose points because I simplify incorrectly. Um, but I get m prime of 2 is negative 3. And then we have one more part, and it's strictly about g of x. And it says, is there a number c in the closed interval, negative 5 to negative 3, such that g prime of c equals negative 4, and we have to justify our answer. And this, um, so we need to go back to the original problem, and we see that g is a differentiable function. So since g is differentiable, the mean value theorem is going to apply. So let's do that. So g of x is differentiable. So you want to state that so that you know that the mean value theorem applies. And we'll say, therefore, by mvt, um, g prime of c is equal to g of negative 3 minus g of negative 5 over negative 3 minus negative 5. And that's just straight normal mean value theorem. Now we pull the values off the table. And it's going to be uh, g of negative 3 is 2. So it's 2 minus g of negative 5 is 10 over um, negative 3 minus negative 5 is just 2. So we have negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. Um, and then we just say for some c that's between uh, negative 5 and negative 3. And there you go. That's all we needed. So uh, that's question number six. A uh, lot of uh, different representations of functions, I guess. But I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.